Good morning class, welcome to Game Dev Academy. Make sure you sign the register by putting here sir in the comments below. I'm Professor Whittington and in this video we're going to be starting something brand new. So this is going to be the first class in the Game Dev series and we're moving on. So we did season one of Introduction to Unreal Engine and we're now going to season two which is going to be making your first game. So I'll throw something on the screen to give you an idea of what we'll be making. It's basically going to be a breakout clone but we're going to make it a little prettier and a little bit more creative too. We're going to be learning about lots of different blueprint functions and lots of terminology and all that good stuff. And in this first video, it's going to be all about getting the project set up. So let's not mess about. Let's just get stuck in. Okay, then let's make a start on this project. And the first place we need to be is in this new project area of Unreal Engine. Here it is. And as always, you've got the choice of the different types of projects you could choose. But for this one, because I want to really focus on doing everything ourselves, we're going to start with a blank project. So we've got no code waiting for us. We're going to have to create everything ourselves. I also want to do something a little bit different. So we're not going to do desktop console for this one. We'll, we'll get it ready for mobile tablet. Because this is going to be, when it's finished, uh, have a touch input for it, then mobile or tablet is a good fit. We don't want maximum quality, we'll go scalable 3D or 2D. Uh, again, because we're aiming it at mobile platforms, better to keep the quality in check. And we're not going to have any starter content. You can bring that in later if you want to. There are ways of doing that. But for now, we're going to go with no starter content because it'll help to keep the package size down when we're finished. And then the last thing I'll do, which you need to do as well, is give the project a name and decide where you want to save it to. And I've decided to save mine into my shared files. So if you want to get access to the assets and to the project as I'm building it, you can use the link in the video description. And I'm calling mine Breakout Tutorial. And then we can create a project. So when Unreal Engine opens up, you'll be greeted with this sort of default level that it creates for you. But as I want to make sure we're going to build everything ourselves, we're going to create a new level with nothing in it at all. So to do that, we'll go up to File. We're going to choose New Level and we're going to do an empty level. There it is. And then the first thing I'm going to do is save this level into a levels folder. So I'm going to right click in my content browser. I'm going to choose to make a new folder. and I'm just going to call that levels. And then I'm going to call this level. So file, save current as. I'm going to put it in the levels folder and I'm just going to call it level one and we'll click on save. The next thing I want to do as part of setting up is make it so that every time we open this project, Unreal Engine will take us to this new level. We don't want to go back to that weird default one. We want it to know exactly which level it should open in. So that's what we'll do now. So in order to do that, we're going to go to edit and project settings. And that opens this window here. And we need to click on the maps and modes section under project. So you can see that by default, the editor startup map is this template default, which we don't want. So we're gonna click on the drop down box there and there is our level one that we've saved. So we'll do that there. And then whenever we start the game, we want this one here, the game default map to be level one as well. So that means that now whenever we open the game or the editor, it will take us to the correct level. Okay, so now that that's done, we can close the project settings just for now. And the next thing I want to do to wrap up this step is to bring in and check the collisions on the meshes that we'll be using to get the first part of this exercise set up. So I'm just going to create a new folder for that. I will call it um, static meshes. I'm going to open that folder up and then we can choose to import. Okay, so at this stage, you can bring in your own assets or you can use mine using the link in the description. So if we go to the shared folder that I'm working in, there is a breakout assets folder and there'll be more assets put in this as the tutorial uh, matures as, it, as we get further through it. But for now, we only need these four meshes. So we get a ball, a block, what I'm calling bounds, which is kind of what the, the ball's gonna bounce off as it goes through the, the play field and also a paddle, which is the, the thing at the bottom that knocks the ball around. So we're gonna import all of those. So I'll click on open. And then it's gonna ask us some questions about them. How would we like to import them? 
So I'm going to let it auto generate collision, although there are collisions included, which so we'll have a look at that in a sec. The the import scale should be right, so I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, and what I don't want to do for this one, I don't want to really mess things up. I don't want to import the materials or the textures. When it comes to materials and textures, we'll create our own within Unreal Engine. So when that's done, we can just click on import all and it will do that for all four meshes with the same settings. Here we go. So you can see now we've got the ball, the block, the paddle and the game bounds as well. So what I want to do now finally is just make sure that the collisions are set up properly or if I'm not happy with them, I'll change them myself. So we'll start with the ball. So I'm going to double click on this and this opens it up in the static mesh editor. And for a game like this, as we're going to set this prototype up, physics and collisions and getting it to bounce around, all that stuff's really important. So we need to get it right. So what I'll do is this collision thing here, we'll be using simple collision. You can't use complex collisions uh, for the type of thing we're doing. It has to be simple. So that's got to be right. And if we zoom in, you can see that this green thing here represents the collision. And while that's a good attempt, it's not good enough. So I'm going to put in uh, a new collision mesh for this one. So if I click on collision here, we can remove that collision because it's rubbish. And we're going to click on collision again and we're going to add a sphere simplified collision. And what's good about this is you can see it just fits perfectly. You can just see it poking out of the mesh a little bit. So that now will be perfect for what we need because it's the right shape and it fits the ball exactly. So we can click on save there. Now we just need to check the other three. So let's have a look at block. We'll turn on the simple collision. That's perfect. You can see that that fits exactly. So we'll save that. And you'll notice we've got a little asterisk next to the file name. And that's because it's not been saved yet. So we just need to click on save. That goes away. And then let's say the project crashes or something like that. When we reopen it, the asset will be there because it's now been saved. So let's check the game bounds. Um, okay. And we will just check the simple collision on those. And that's pretty good. So I've got a custom collision that I put on this. So it doesn't fit the outside exactly. You can see it just fits in here. And if we go over here, I did also try some funky stuff here. Which I may take out. The one you download might not have that in it anymore. Um, because it's not necessary. But to get the collisions in the way I wanted it, I had to put custom collisions in like this. So that's working fine, as long as you can see something like that, maybe without these cylinders though, because they're not necessarily needed. Um, but that one's okay, so we'll save that. And the final one should be working uh, is the paddle. Yep, and we can see that that collision mesh just fits that perfectly. So we can save all four of those, and we'll close the static mesh editors. Goodbye, static mesh editors. Awesome. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first step. In the next step, what we'll be doing is setting up our inputs so we can control how the game is controlled. So we'll put some keyboard controls in just to get things up and running. We'll also be getting the screen size correct so that we've got um, kind of a mobile phone template so that everything works, we get the right orientation. And we'll also be setting up a game mode and having a look at what a game mode is because that's kind of important. I believe that quality education should be available to everybody and for that reason all of the classes at Game Dev Academy are completely free and were supported by our very generous school governors over at Patreon. If you'd like to become a Game Dev Academy governor and support our work as well as helping us to steer the channel in the right direction then use the link in the description to be taken to the Patreon page.